So before the video starts, I've been trying to play around with like different cameras and lighting and stuff like that just to make the lighting better in my videos. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realize till I sat down to edit this video that the flash that I use made my eyes turn red. <laughs> I honestly forgot that was like a thing that would happen because I haven't taken a picture with a flash photography since I was like 10. But yeah, it is jarring. <laughs> There's no other way around it. Like I opened it and I was like, ah, it literally looks like I'm a cat that was found in the forest at midnight on someone's flash photography and there's really no way around it. So yeah, just bear with me as I try and figure this out. Thank you. Today I am here to discuss The Boy and the Heron, which is the latest film from Studio Ghibli directed by Hayao Miyazaki. I have a confession to make. I have never seen a Studio Ghibli film. I don't know why. I really don't. They look so interesting to me and a lot of my friends are into them. I don't know why I just never saw them. So crossing them off my bucket list, I went to the theaters to see this one and I went in like not knowing a super a lot about it which I think is the way it was intended to. I know there was like little promotion for it and my brother had shown me the trailer before we went and saw it but even then it wasn't super clear. The only like synopsis I had heard of it before and I don't even think like it was like an official synopsis. I think it was just someone like explaining the little that we knew about it was that it was going to be about a kid going on like a spiritual journey trying to find his mom after she had passed away and I really recommend and obviously this isn't like the most newsworthy thing since this is the way that they promoted it but going and knowing the least amount you can for it honestly I think makes the experience that much better because you don't know what to expect and I think that just made it more exciting and I feel like especially nowadays a lot of movies are so over marketed and they show so much like with clips coming out and just promoting it everywhere that you kind of already know what to expect by the time you're in the movie. So to have a movie where I really didn't know what was going on and it was just kind of this whole journey of not knowing where things were going to go from one point to another was really fun. Like even the whole journey of getting into kind of the spiritual other world, that took a lot longer than I expected it to be. And it wasn't bad in any way. Like I, I like that we got to establish more of like the world that we knew originally and then moved to this spirit world. And there were a lot of things that like even from my little expectations I had from it were wrong and I love that. So I saw the dubbed version, which normally I am completely anti-dub, but listen <laughs> and the reason like the this movie like first stuck out to me was I heard Robert Patterson like did a really good job in it and I was like oh that's cool like Robert Patterson just has like this weird career trajectory that like he's never in what you expect him to be in yet he's always good in it so I was just interested in that like a little ears perked up and then I saw a clip of him as the heron and I played it and I was like, there's no way that's Robert Patterson. <laughs> like I originally just thought he was gonna play the main character, the boy. And then my brother was like, no, that's definitely him. And I'm like, no, there's no like conspiracy hat on. I still do not believe that's Robert Patterson. Like I know it's Robert Patterson in my heart of hearts, but like the logical part of me is like, there's no way that's Robert Patterson. Like he did such a good job. And I think all the voice acting did really good. There are a lot of like famous names. Florence Pugh was in it, Robert Patterson, Kristen Bale, Gemma Chan. And I feel like they did a really good job. I think the reason I don't usually like dub is you lose a lot of the emotion. Like it very much feels like someone just monotonely reading a script that they were given, not knowing like the emotion that's in it or anything like that. Whereas I feel like these actors really embodied the story and like the emotion was still there. It wasn't just like, no, they're what, you know what I mean? So I think the dubbed version worked well for that. And it really was amazing to hear like Robert Patterson's voice, like I said, just completely unrecognizable. And I think he did the two like different voices because I believe he was also like when the heron kind of transformed more into like that bird man had a different voice but still like I was just super impressed because that man is British as British comes and to have that voice come out of him was just amazing. The main star of course follows this boy named Mahito who at the start of the film we see is living in this time of war. At the start of this film we see him waking up to find out that there's a fire at the hospital that his mom is currently staying in and we find out that his mom perishes in the fire and immediately like a year after they move him and his father to where his mother was born. His father has now married his mother's younger sister, which really threw me for a loop. And then the younger sister also reveals that she's pregnant, which again threw me for a loop because I was like, there is no way this man moved on so fast with his dead wife's 
younger sister. Mahito, I do have to say, like, he was trying, okay? Like, <laughs> again, for all that he got thrown at him, he was really trying to be, like, polite and courteous, but he wasn't, like, warm or, I think, really open to knowing her as a mother, which, again, fair. It's been a year. He's in a completely new place. Everyone at school sucks and is mean to him, and he's just, like, really going through it. I really liked Mahito as a character. There's a great YouTube video I watched the other day that came about from this tweet from Modern Girls talking about how, like, all Disney protagonists are kind of the same quirky, I'm so different, laughy, clumsy kind of main characters and how that's getting very repetitive because we're not seeing any diversity in terms of personality, even though we're getting more diversity in terms of race and everything like that. I really liked watching this, seeing a character because it also felt, for me, a character that was different that wasn't like that quirky, um, happy-go-lucky kind of person. What I really, really liked was that he got to be angry. He got to be selfish. Like, he was polite and everything, like I said, to them on the surface, but there was never anything more to it than that. And what I really liked particularly was the relationship between him and the Heron. How, like, they really duke it out for a majority of this movie. Like, they do become friends and that journey is really cute to see. But I just like how mean he is to the heron and like they he really gives it like he calls him a liar he's like you can't trust him he's a liar and i just felt like he got to be like that felt different than what i'm used to seeing in main characters especially nowadays when they're all kind of like this again quirky clumsy personality where it's like oh i'm just so goofy you know i enjoyed that and i think a big part of that too was we also see a moment where he gets beat up at school and then walking back home he decides to pick up a rock and bash his head in basically so he doesn't have to go back to school and I just think that was I mean that was a brutal moment to see you know like a kid like self-inflicting harm on him because of how he's feeling but I think it felt more poignant than like seeing him just be like ah shucks you know oh me like it felt more realistic of like you see like how he's really feeling on the inside how you know he just doesn't feel like he has anyone to talk to. He's kind of trying to cope with all this and it just comes out in that moment, which again is like when you see it and like the blood, you're like, oh my gosh. But I think that's the point of like the visual of like how he's feeling. And I just think him as a character was so compelling and also so different. Like I said, the description that I had gotten going into this was like, he goes on this journey to try and find his mom. But what's actually interesting is he really goes on this journey to find his stepmom because his stepmom just disappears. He sees her like walk down into the tower and the whole journey, he's always like, I'm not leaving without her. And I think originally it's kind of like an obligation of like, you know, like everyone's always like, oh, what are you sweet on her? And he's like, no, my dad likes her. So it's kind of like that. But then you see how it transforms into like, he's really like, no, I love this person like this person is my new mom and I want her to come back with me and I mean the whole scene of them um in the delivery room when she's just like go away like I don't want you I hate you like screaming at him and he calls her mother for the first time chills it was just so well done and I feel like there's so many emotions with this of grief and questions of like where, where do I go now? I really liked seeing his mom as a younger girl and that she was his friend in this. I always said like <laughs> if I had like any power in the world like if you were like you can do anything you wanted like on my list like top three would be go back and see my parents when they were younger. I just think that's there, there's something so interesting about seeing your parents when they were younger and like how like what they were like before, you know, like things that happened to them that you know them now, like what they were like then. So I really like that he got to see her as a younger girl. She did seem kind of like all like knowing of like she knew like what was going to happen to her and stuff like that, but she had made peace with it and accepted it. Her like whole imagery was so amazing how like she became like the fire and that was kind of reminiscent of like how her ending would be. But it was something that now in this world she had used to be powerful and help people I thought was really cool and then also just seeing the decision she made to be like you know like I know what's gonna happen to me but like I have you and I know all the good things that are gonna happen to me too so she still decides to go back to the world even knowing um her ending I think was really it's like I'm just so, like tearing up thinking about it because it was just so beautiful the imagery itself was so amazing I loved the heron how it was kind of like this trickster figure in the beginning how it was really you know going after him and trying to say like oh your mom's not gone and he never believed that which I liked I feel like he was a very smart kid which I really liked because I don't like when they're stupid and when they like make choices that 
are like clearly bad and like have the consequences and then other people are affected because of that like it seemed like his stepmom more like was in a trance which they kind of talked about how like their bloodline can hear and be um controlled by the tower and the voice of the tower so I don't think she made the choice to go in there I think that was more like something that happened after she saved him from the heron but I liked that like the heron originally is like this figure that's like trying to trick him and trying to you know corral him to come in and I don't know what he want to do with him exactly but it was not good things and I liked in turn to that that he was like no there's no way like my mom's gone you're not tricking me and he was very resolute in that I, I don't know I think it's open to interpretation if you think that him going after the stepmom part of him was still thinking maybe his mom would be there I mean we saw when the heron set up that like illusion of his mom how he was like oh my gosh and like ran over to it but I also think that's just like what you would do you know so I think that's I think what's clever about this is there's so much of it that's open to interpretation and based on your own personal experiences I think with grief I think with questions about life and stuff like that I think everyone can kind of take what they want from this movie and I think certain parts and aspects of it will be more special and more like connecting than someone else and that's really cool that like so many different people can watch this movie and have different connections to it and different reasons and things that they get out of it I just think it's a very comforting movie like it it's got its dark moments and I mean it opens up very dark and we see I think Mahito kind of in a depression honestly in the beginning and I think this journey is about him getting out of that and realizing that there can still be good in his life and that's not disrespecting his mother's memory by you know being okay with having a new mom with having a new kind of family like he can still honor her and be okay with moving forward and it's not losing any part of her so I just think it was so beautiful the whole story in general I loved like I said that the heron and him were like enemies to friends like they were so mean to each other in the beginning and the slow reveal of the heron as like this bird man was so interesting because I remember watching it and like originally you saw the nose and I was like oh he just has like a nose in his beak which is kind of iffy but interesting and then it was like you got to see like more teeth and you're like wait why are there teeth in the teeth and then like the eyes and everything and even just like the design of the Birdman when he just had like the suit pulled back his wings now looked like arms and his legs now looked like feet it was just beautiful imagery and I just really really loved it I think the story is so beautiful and like I said so personal and you can take so much from it differently I loved the grannies they were so cute and normally like I don't like when people like won't talk about like what's going on like when it's like there's like a curse or something and like they know it and they won't talk about it but I felt like they truly like they did a good job of making it seem like they were like look if we talk about it like that's gonna make it happen but also like showing how terrified they themselves were of the curse so I feel like they did just a good job of like these tropes that sometimes can be pulled off badly like I felt like they did them normally how I don't like them but pulled them off well in explaining it if that makes sense so I really really like this movie the visuals are stunning which is not a surprise if you've ever seen any other Studio Ghibli movie but for my first one I think this one will always just be so special to me I definitely could not recommend it enough I loved it it's definitely one of my favorite animated movies of the year and probably one of my favorite movies of the year honestly I just I can't wait to hear what other people have to think about it like that's the first thing I want to do after watching it was like read like other people's interpretations and reactions to it because I think everyone is going to be so different even though there's like this underlying narrative obviously but everyone's going to react to things differently based on like their life experiences and I think that's just so beautiful so yeah I really enjoyed it and if you have seen it I'd love to hear what you thought about it and what like you took away after watching it and everything like that so if you have seen it leave your thoughts in the comments also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time bye